So we're here with Bronwyn Eisen, and um, first of all, are you a California native? Where, where were you born? I, well, I guess you could say that. I was born in Sacramento. Okay. And what brought you to the desert? My mother. My mother brought me here when I was 10 years old. Okay. And what <laughs> made what made her come here? You know, she's in real estate, okay. and so she was looking to expand her real estate career, and this okay. is where she decided to come. Okay. Now you own and t you own a yoga studio and teach mm -hmm. yoga. Now was that something? Was that what you always did, or what you always wanted to do as a young girl, or how did you evolve into this? No, okay. it, I had a completely different plan. Okay. I attended Arizona State University, and I have a broadcast journalism degree. Okay. So I was on my way mm -hmm. to anchoring and reporting, of which I ended up doing, yeah. and had a great time doing it. And then I had a foot injury. Oh, yeah. So I like to say that yoga found me rather than I found yoga. Mm -hmm. And I ended up in a yoga class after physical therapy, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And then it just kind of started to take on its own life. Mm -hmm. I practiced for many, many years before I, I started actually teaching. Yeah. And then I moved here to the desert after living in Arizona for quite some time. And I knew how to do two things when I moved here. I knew how to teach yoga mm -hmm. and I knew broadcasting. Mm -hmm. So when I did move back here to the Valley about seven years ago, I was simultaneously working both careers. Mm -hmm. And then the yoga just ended up taking precedence mm -hmm. over the broadcasting and Evolve happened. Happened. Yeah. What, if you had to describe what it specifically it is about yoga that you love so much, what would you say? Mm. Oh, there's so many things that I love about it. It's, it really, yoga has been for me, it has been a part of a way that I was able to really find my breath. I was really able to find some peace and calmness and really more so than anything, I was going through a very stressful time mm -hmm. in my life when my yoga practice, when I really started to pick up my yoga practice. And I really found it was the only place that I could catch my breath. Yeah. I had a lot of anxiety and I felt um, so stressed at times that yoga was my outlet. Right. So for people who are stressed, oh my gosh, which is pretty much 100% <laughs> yeah. of the population, yeah. <laughs> yoga is a really, really good stress reliever. Mm -hmm. And I was able to find my breath. There were times I was in class, maybe 30 minutes, and I finally <gasps> caught my breath. Right. And the breathing techniques in yoga also helped facilitate um, wor me working through, I had an upper, upper respiratory disease. I had something that's called valley fever. Wow. And okay. I was sick for about a year and a half Ooh. with this disease, mm -hmm. which is, can be very, very serious. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely attribute my yoga breathing because I was exercising my lungs with this style of, of breathing, which is called ujjayi breathing, and I was able to you know, really strengthen my lungs. It's a physical exercise. It helps tone you and keep you in mm -hmm. shape. But it's also emotional and spiritual and, and so many other things. Well, I think, too, that's that. why they really refer to mind, body, spirit, or mind, mm -hmm. body, soul. You're really able to connect with yourself. So a lot of times I really like to start my classes by having people sit for a few moments and we sit and we breathe and I mm -hmm. really try to guide them to a place where they need to be in the present moment because none of us ever take the time to be in the present moment. Yeah. I yeah. mean very, very, very rarely yeah. unless it, we're truly focusing on it. So we're thinking about other things. What mm -hmm. did I do before I came to yoga? What do I have to do after yoga? Right. It's midweek, like today, you know, we ended up talking about, okay, don't worry about what happened on Monday and Tuesday. Right. Don't worry about what's going to happen what's on happening Thursday and Friday. Now? Be yeah. here now. Take the next 75 minutes. It's a very small portion of your time yeah. out of your life to sit and just, you yeah. know, and, and really focus on, on you and being yeah. in that present moment. I had someone leave class the other day, and he goes, I really paid attention to what you said. Mm -hmm. He goes, I've never felt better in my whole life. And it was his first class, and I was like, wow. I love that testimony. Yeah. And it just lets me know that what I'm doing is is good and it's right and I'm allowing other people yeah. to to express their feelings and not feel shameful or anything like that about when they leave class. Well, I would think that for someone who was really uptight <laughs> like yourself that sometimes do you have people in class who kind of really get like, 
emotional because if you release, if you're breathing correctly for the first time, and that you can just get really emotional because if you're carrying stuff. You know. Yes, and the areas where we hold the most tension are shoulders, shoulders yeah. neck and into the hip area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the hip area, as most of my students will hear me say, I refer to it as a junk drawer. Okay, because we store a lot of emotion. A junk drawer. A I'll junk drawer. Okay. And we've all got junk drawers, yeah. right? And we never want to address what's in the junk drawer. Just, just like door, we never want to yeah. address yes. what's going on in our personal lives. Mm -hmm. ah, we push it to the yeah. side, dust it under the rug, I'll yeah. deal with that later. Yeah. I don't want to you know, yeah. even focus on that. So in yoga, if we do a lot of hip opening, in fact, it's probably my number one requested thing to do hip, in the body. Hip opening. opening mm -hmm. Hip opening. So we will get into the hips, and I usually say, OK, I'm going to let you know we're getting into our junk drawer. Mm -hmm. You are going to probably feel an emotional release. And I've had people who have been with me for quite some time who even at the last position of the class, which is called Shavasana, mm -hmm. where we just lay there you know your, your eyes are closed you're supposed to make like a human starfish mm -hmm. and some people will still just stare up at the ceiling and I'm going oh please I'm just yeah. I'm waiting for the moment to, to get you to get close there, your yeah. eyes please and yeah. some people never completely do. shut down and they're just they're out some people will fall asleep yeah so it's really about what's going on with them personally I mm -hmm. think a lot of times or some people don't feel safe closing yeah. their eyes right they're right. in an environment where we are very safe and nurturing here right what are you proudest of oh Probably my daughters. Yeah. yeah, I think most people probably yeah. always say that is yeah. you know they're they're a true blessing. I I wouldn't know what to do without them. It's you know being a single mother has its challenges for yeah. sure. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Bonnie. Thanks.